Thanks, Freak. We're joined by Evil Genius's Poe Belter after a win against second place Cloud9. Must have felt pretty good, right? Yeah, it did feel pretty good. <laughs> All right. Now, how important is it going into the final week of the split where you've got to play four games over three days to, to get that first win on the first day? Uh, it's really good, actually, because Chris also ended up losing their game, and that's kind of who we have to pass in order to make it to playoffs. And with them losing and us having won, um, that makes our really slim chance of making playoffs this week just a little bit better. So you guys really focusing on making it to playoffs? Is that where your eyes are right now? Yeah, go big or go home, you know? All right. I like that <laughs> attitude. I love that attitude. So uh, moving forward, right, you're going to have to win probably your next three games or possibly two to get into that playoffs, uh, yeah. into the playoff spot. If you, if you can't do so, though, how important is it to at least get seventh so that you have that choice for the relegation matches? Um, I think that the amateur teams currently will all be able to beat, so that isn't as important to us. But, I mean, of course it still is important to um, be able to face a weaker amateur team, so that's still a goal, you know, if we don't make playoffs. All right, speaking of amateur teams, what about CLG coming up here tomorrow with that <laughs> little patchwork team? What are you guys doing to prepare for that match? Because it's very difficult when there's yeah. five guys that kind of patchwork team. Um, I think we'll just, you know, try not to do anything stupid, and I think we should be able to win out because we just have so much more practice than they have together. I mean, I don't think they have any practice together at all. Yeah. Against Cloud9 specifically, they're, you know, famed as being such a fabulous team fighting team. We watched that game kind of start to go pretty late and stall out. So, you know, I know we're jumping to the end of the game, but... W w what were the calls at the end of the game to kind of accelerate and finally get that, you know, last fight that you were looking for to finish the game off? Um, the game was just kind of like stalled out for 20 minutes because they have Orianna, Kog'Maw, Gragas, and those are all so good at clearing at high ground on the base. So um, we weren't really able to out-rotate them between their turrets or anything, and they just had so much AoE wave clear. Um, we knew that all we had to do was kind of wait it out until next Baron because then they'd finally come out of their base and then we could force a fight on more open ground. And so that's pretty much what we did. And you guys picked the Mundo in that double AP. That seems to be all the rage, and Cloud9 kind of pioneered that in the last couple of weeks. Is that really the strategy? Just get Mundo tanky, stall it out, and then you guys win, even with a gold advantage early? Yeah. Hmm. All right. No. There you go. <laughs> <Triple> <laughs> <out>. <laughs> that's what I was looking for. Thank you. No, the stacking magic, re magic resist on top of the health regen, having a giant front line is definitely helpful. But you also had a Braum and a really tanky Lee Sin. So how, you know, given the fact that you're playing TF rather squishy, Tristana, who you have to protect, do you really need all three of those members to be super tanky? Or is that just kind of how the, you know, the cards fell this time? Um, it's just kind of how everything ended up happening. Um, Window as a champion isn't too great at diving, so everyone has to be kind of beefy to survive the sort of longer team fight where you're not going to be killing their carries instantly at the beginning. All right, what's been happening with EG? I'm going to switch gears for a second here. You guys had the fastest game of the split at 24 minutes in your previous game, not this one, but the one before it. You guys beat CLG in about 27 minutes previously. What are you guys keep, you guys just are getting it together at the end of the split? Like what's happening? Is it finally coming together? Is the calls different? What's happened? What's changed? Um, I think it's just an effect of us, you know, just kind of stepping it up, stepping up our practice time, how seriously we're treating the game. And unfortunately it's come a little bit late, you know, there's still a kind of slim chance that we make it to playoffs though. And so we're hoping that we can ride this, um, recent success into playoffs. All right, I want to jump into a replay from the game. About 40 minutes in, uh, Cloud9 manages to pick up the Baron, but you guys get a triple kill off the backside of that. So talk to me about that initiation, because you actually go you go in pretty deep for this fight. So I'll let you walk me through it. Okay, so we see Dr. Mundo teleporting onto the ward right there. Um, there's actually a ward in pit that if you teleport the two, we probably could have just wiped them, but unfortunately that was a mistake. I get a stun onto high and then pop hourglass. And so TF's really good at that, just stunning someone and then drawing aggro as soon as his hourglass wears off. And um, my teammates, they're still all around me trying to get me after my hourglass wears off. And from there on on, uh, Altex was putting out consistent damage and then we're able to clean up the fight. It was a fantastic Braum ult too by Crepo there, yeah, line, like, lining them, them up. <laughs> so my next, my next question is going to be about that bot lane, Altec and Crepo. We saw them play exceptionally well last week and they're seemingly doing so again. How important is it that those two being in the duo lane have their synergy and really come out in these late game carries? Um, it's really good. Like they've shown moments of brilliance throughout the entire split, even towards the beginning when Altic was a new member. Like, there is this game against Curse we had where we were doing Baron, and then they just, like, both shot out skill shots and killed the guy trying to come in. So they work pretty well together, and it will only get better, so. Yeah, you guys seem to put a lot of attention there. Inox was down, like, 130 CS, but still relevant on Mundo. Is it just that's the strategy? Just focus that bottom lane and get them fed? 
Uh, yeah, I think that's um, you know, just how our team ends up working out. Like Altec it just, is just happens. <laughs> yeah, he just is a very greedy for farm player, and it, I mean it works out for us a lot of the time though, so it's okay. Well, yeah, when you're playing those hyper carries, you've got the Kog'Maw and the Triss. It's just kind of the flavor of the month right now in the 80 carry position. It's not bad to be pulling a double lift and, and get all that farm. Uh, I want to jump into the final replay we have just real quick so we can close out the game itself. 48 minutes in, you guys go five for one in the mid lane. So just walk me through this kind of snow, uh, this kind of bulldozer of a fight. Okay, so they finally got out of their base. So I start flash engaging with the gold card. And then Brom lands a nice ulti. And then... Their carries are being zoned up by me because TF's like just the best late game champion in my opinion. And so yeah, from here it's just clean up. They all used flash to get away from me and then Window is chasing them down because he's so tanky. And in the back, Altex is dealing consistent damage. So you see this opportunity because you're the one who initiated it, right? So did you communicate that to your team or did you just flash and go? Uh, I said, yeah, I'm going to go on high guys. Go, 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 go. Yeah, your Zonia's plays were really, really good all game long. And I actually want to ask you, because you gave us the play-by-plays of those, what are the communication like? You, you just said that you say, I'm going, but what are the calls like in a very long, drawn-out game where you have a lead and you're just trying to stall it? Um, when it's being stalled out, it's like, okay, we'll try pushing this lane. Okay, wait, never mind. They cleared it the wave in two seconds. Let's try this lane. Okay, it's not working. We're just going to wait till the next Baron. All right, I have a question that's completely outside the realm of the game itself. It was actually a Twitter question that we had last weekend, uh, which was directed towards you of how do you balance work and school uh, as a pro player and school? And then are you helping Alltech in that kind of scenario, like <laughs> having had that past experience? Um, yeah, well, fortunately, I don't have to worry about that anymore. But it, I guess it was kind of an issue having to juggle school and pro league. But um you know, I just go to school, try and get as much homework and studying I could done during school hours so that when I was home, I could focus on playing. Hmm. All and right. and Alltech, I mean, how is he, hand, is he handling it well himself? Or? Oh, um, yeah, he's actually on summer break right now. I think he opted to take, like, online schooling or something of that sort instead of um, just, like, trying to commute back and forth from Canada because that would be kind of a That'd hassle. That would be rough. <laughs> that would be rough, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so ridiculous. All right, I got to ask you, what do you want to do when you grow up? Besides be a professional video game player, or do you want to do this forever? Uh, probably not forever, you know. Oh. I'm kind of boring, I guess. I just want to have a stable office job, you know, work a nine to five, come home to a wife and kids. I'd, oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> he's, he's planning ahead. <laughs> Ladies. Uh, anyway. Playoffs too. Uh, kind of, yeah, looking into the rest of Super Week, you've got CLG, Complexity, and LMQ. Now, there, like we mentioned, there's the, the substitute roster of CLG. There's Complexity, one of the other teams that you need to pass up to get into that sixth spot. spot. And then LMQ, who's just having a little bit of you know inner turmoil right now. So what are your thoughts on those three matches? Good, you know, Good odds, or how prepared are you? How confident are you going into them? We're pretty confident going into the rest of the matches this week because um, we think that we can beat all the other teams. Like you said, LMQ is having some inner struggles right now, which you know sucks for them, but works in our favor. CLG with the roster kind of explosion switch up. And um, so, yeah, having won the C9 match, which we expected to be one of the hardest for our, this week, we're feeling good. And since you guys said you had your eyes set on playoffs, so I actually want to change that for a second. If you were looking at Challenger, which Challenger team would you not want to face? Uh, you said you're, you're good with all of them, but which one is the scariest to you? Actually, Team 8, who dropped out in the semifinals, is the scariest to me. Like, they always put so much pressure in, it's kind of hard for me to get going. And whenever we scream them, I feed like three, two or three kills early on, so, yeah. All right, well, lucky for you. That's not going to be an issue, I guess, at this point. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Paul Belter, for joining us at the desk. Gave us a lot of information there. Now, we've still got more Summer Split action coming your way. After a quick break, LMQ will take on Team Solo Mid in a battle for first place. Don't go anywhere.